We are going to discuss Psalm 3. The main point of this psalm is that salvation belongs to the Lord. We see this as the main point because this is how the psalm begins. Uh, David's foes are questioning and stating, they're saying that there is no salvation for David in God. So this is the opening statement that there's no deliverance for him, there's no salvation for him, and uh, David responds, actually there is, because salvation does not belong to man, it belongs to the Lord. So the main idea is that salvation belongs to the Lord. Notice this is a psalm of David written after he fled from Absalom, his son. If you remember in 2 Samuel 14 through 18, we learn about Absalom, David's second son, rebelling against David and holding a coup. And it's actually quite successful. Several of uh, David's counselors and important people of Jerusalem side with Absalom. It says even that the heart of Israel is with Absalom because for two years, Absalom stole the heart of the people. You can read about that in 2 Samuel 14 through 18. But David begins by lamenting over the fact that there are many people who are against him. Again, in 2 Samuel, we learn that these are uh, previous fr friends uh, as, as well as enemies, including his own son. So there are many people who are against him. And all these people are saying that David will not be delivered from Absalom. Rather, he will be destroyed. After lamenting this reality, David switches his attention to the fact that, that the Lord is the one who defends David. He is the one who keeps David. He is the very honor of David. He is David's defense, and he is personally involved in lifting his head. Therefore, David cries to the Lord, and the amazing thing we learn is that the Lord answers. We learn in these verses that uh, David cried out, he slept. Now remember, he's fleeing from Absalom, his son, and he's sleeping and awaking. Why? Because the Lord sustained him. Therefore, he's not going to be afraid of thousands of people who set themselves against him. David is, is going to sleep because the Lord is his sustainer, and he's not going to be afraid because the Lord is his sustainer. So he's not going to fear, but what is he going to do? He's going to cry out to God, arise and save me. We learn that the Lord defends David as his shield, but he also strikes his enemies and breaks their teeth. And then he reflects on the main idea, salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be on your people. So this is a psalm uh, of David reflecting on the fact that salvation belongs to God. It does not belong to men. This is the main idea. And a few discussion questions you could you could discuss are the following. You could first assess our culture's worldview. How does our world speak this message to us? So the worldview of our culture wants to tell us that we shouldn't hope in God. There's no salvation for us in God. How do they tell us this? Next, you could discuss a time when uh, the Lord lifted your head. Explain a situation where the Lord was your shield and your protector. A time where you cried out to God and, and he answered you. Now, we've learned several things in Psalm 1, 2, and 3, so it might be helpful for us at this point to construct a theology of the Lord based on these three passages. So, for example, we learn here that the Lord is intimately close to David, he is his defender. He is his sustainer. And last week, uh, we learned that, uh, that not only is the Lord the sustainer of his people and the, uh, the protector of his people, uh, rather he is intimately close to his people. David is considered his son, so he's intimately close to his people. And he intimately knows his people. People. So these are just a few things we could talk about, but constructing a theology, what does Psalm 1, 2, and 3 tell us about the Lord might be a helpful thing for us to do. Well, small group leaders, I hope you enjoy discussing this passage uh, with the small groups.